Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting trigonometric equation. We have sine x equals 2, and we're going to be solving for x values. So before we start solving this problem, I'm going to go ahead and show you a graph, which will kind of explain a couple of different things, and then we'll proceed with the solution. Okay, so here's the graph of y equals sine x and y equals 2. So if there was a real solution, then we would have intersection points, right? Therefore, for real x, sine x cannot be 2. So let's go ahead and take a look at why that's not going to happen, and then we'll proceed with the solution. All right, so sine x is known to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. Why is that so? Well, there's a couple of ways to prove it. You can use the unit circle, you can use a couple other things, but this identity is actually very helpful. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. Let's go ahead and isolate cosine squared here, which can be written as 1 minus sine squared. And as you know, for real x values, cosine squared x cannot be negative, therefore it's always going to be greater than or equal to 0, right? This means sine squared x is less than or equal to 1, and if you take the square root, you're going to end up with the absolute value of sine x is less than or equal to 1, and this implies that sine x is equal to negative 1 and 1, as we mentioned before, all right? So that's what we get from here. And of course, the same thing can be said about cosine x, so those have a lower and upper bound. In other words, they are bounded. Okay? Now, so this tells us that, this tells us that x is not real, right? Well, if x is not real, how do we solve for x, right? That's a good question. And in this case, we do use Euler's formula. And obviously, needless to say, Euler is awesome. He is the most awesomest mathematician, in my opinion. Anyways, so let's go ahead and write those down. What did Euler say? Euler said e to the power ix equals, this is a complex number or complex exponentiation, and this can be written as cosine of x plus i times sine of x. Right? Great. Now, here x is supposed to be real, but does it have to be real all the time? That's a good question, right? Here's my goal. I want to solve for this equation. So sine x is equal to 2, which doesn't have any real solutions. We've seen it, right? At least graphically and also algebraically, maybe. So we're going to try to find the x values for which sine x is equal to 2. So I, knew, I do need an expression for sine x. I have sine x in this equation, but I do need another equation. So let's go ahead and replace x with negative x. We get e to the power negative x equals cosine of negative x, which is the same as cosine of x because cosine is an even function. And then uh, sine of negative x is going to be negative sine of x, so we can just put a minus sign here. Now, in this case, if we add these two equations, we get cosine x, but we want to get sine x. So let's go ahead and negate the second equation and add. In other words, we're subtracting these two equations e to the power ix minus e to the power negative ix equals, cosine cancels out, we end up with 2i sine x. Awesome. What do you do from here? Well, we're going to be solving for sine x, so let's divide both sides by 2i sine x, put it on the left, equals e to the ix minus e to the negative ix divided by 2i. Now at this point, you can go ahead and you know, multiply the top and the bottom by negative i to get rid of the complex number at the bottom and, you know, make it real, so on and so forth. But we don't really need to do it because we're going to set this equal to a numerical value, right? And that is going to be 2. Remember, uh, the original equation was what? Sine x equals 2, right? So that's what we're going to set it equal to. So sine x is equal to 2. And then let's go ahead and solve this equation now, because this it replaces sine x, all right? And it's kind of nice because we turn the trigonometric equation to an exponential equation. And that exponential equation is going to turn into something else you'll see in a little bit. So e to the ix, and you can go ahead and write the e to the power negative ix as 1 over e to the power ix. 
and then cross multiply you get 4i right that's going to be 4i and now we must use substitution so if you go ahead and call this something like I don't know z maybe how about z because z is a complex number we get z minus 1 over z equals 4i and then we can go to multiply everything by z z squared minus 1 equals 4i z awesome let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and this becomes what a quadratic equation and with the quadratic formula we can easily solve it right let's go ahead and take a look z equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared you have to square negative 4i which is 16i squared minus 4ac which is plus 4 notice that i squared is negative 1 so this is negative 16 plus 4 is negative 12 so this gives us 4i plus minus negative 12 over 2 but that is basically 2 root 3i and then we can basically take out i so write this as 4 plus minus 2 root 3 all multiplied by i divided by 2 now we can go ahead and divide everything by 2 in the numerator that's going to give us 2 plus minus root 3 multiplied by i divided by 2 and guess what those are going to be our z values but what is z right well z is what 1 over it's not 1 over z is e to the power ix great let's go ahead and replace z with e to the power ix because our goal remember is to, to solve for x values so from this equation we should be able to find the x values by using natural logs but we must do a couple different things first anyways so from here we get the following oh by the way i forgot to cancel out the 2 when I divide it I'm like over dividing by 2 so the answer is supposed to be let's erase all of that and z is equal to 2 plus minus root 3 all multiplied by okay so this is, this is i to the power e to the power i x and now we're going to solve for x okay so now let's write this one more time and let me proceed with the positive solution the other one is going to be very similar and we can kind of indicate that at the end so this is e to the power ix if you ln both sides obviously you're going to ln a product so that's going to turn into the sum of two lns and then you can go ahead and do the following this becomes ix this is just going to stay as is because that's a numerical value and then for i i'm going to replace i with something exponential how about e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 and pi because remember i is 0 plus i and it actually makes a pi over 2 radian uh, degrees angle whatever okay and then we can bring this again to the front just like before so we get ix equals ln 2 plus root 3 plus i times pi over 2 plus 2 and pi and then we can go ahead and work this out by divide both sides by i or multiply both sides by negative i and this is what you're going to get from here negative ln 2 plus 3 2 plus root 3 i and then i times negative i is going to be negative i squared which is positive one so we're just going to add this part and that'll be it okay so that's the x value and obviously n is an integer so you can replace n with certain things such as you can replace n with zero if you want and also this is the real part that's the imaginary part so you can go ahead and write the real part first x equals pi over 2 plus 2 n pi and then you can subtract this is the real part from that ln 2 plus root 3 i and this is going to be approximately and for n equals 0 of course I was supposed to uh, get rid of this and write it as x equals pi over 2 so that's going to be pi over 2 minus that okay minus this and let's bring this closer like this and that's going to be it okay let me do it again so like this okay that's good so that's going to be my x value for n equals zero and this is going to be approximately oops it's going to be approximately 1.5708 plus minus 1.3170 i why did i put a plus minus because 2 plus root 3 and 2 minus root 3 are reciprocals so they're just going to bring a negative one to the front and so on and so forth and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, 
and bye-bye.